News Biscuit, real fake news. Welcome to News Biscuit, the UK's original fake news. News Biscuit, still better written than Rings of Power. <laughs> I'm your host, Renfo, and I'm joined by two people more ridiculed than Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby. <laughs> Midfield Diamond. Hello. And Paul L. Hello. This month, Queen Elizabeth tragically dies too late to avoid meeting Liz Truss. <laughs> Wristbands proving that you visited the coffin are sold on eBay, whereas evidence that you met Prince Andrew is still with the FBI. <laughs> and we ask, are we woke enough to accept a man queen? <laughs> so that brings us to our first round using brief where our panelists select their favorite headlines. Paul L, what do you have? Jockey, good to firm in hospital after Viagra overdose. Nice. Start with a bit of smut first. <laughs> yes, I thought, why not? Come and, on. Then, and then keep digging from that moment yes, on. <laughs> exactly. It's only downhill from here. Yeah, it's not quite Oscar Wilde, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a man who accidentally sat on a bicycle pump says it really put the wind up him. <laughs> I'm noticing a theme here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so am I now, unfortunately. So, uh, someone, someone, there's a butlins missing you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. Great escape tunneler successfully buried on third attempt. I mean, <laughs> proof that you can keep a good man down. Uh. <laughs> so he's just like slowly descended into charlie tunnel yes i assume so yeah <laughs> this is one i had to look up i don't know if it's actually they did die or if it's just a good joke <laughs> <laughs> last one minister for ballooning let go uh, <laughs> midfield diamond what have you got piers morgan still looking for ways to make the queen's death about him <laughs> uh, well he's not alone in that is he i mean if anyone has been on social media for the last 10 days but the response of the media and people online has been batshit <laughs> yeah. there's there's no other way of describing it so i mean let's go i mean let's run through the list we're gonna go off topic here a little bit or just kind of wander off uh, the, the bbc was the best doing its best impression of being a, a north korean media outlet is the impression i got <laughs> um, absolutely crazy they cancelled doing weather reports for the first couple of days because i don't understand i don't <laughs> understand <laughs> I don't even get there because of it. I'm like, I oh, what? The Queen is dead, so the weather stops. It's disrespectful uh, to know the weather in advance. You're yeah. literally not allowed to rain on her parade. It's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the vibe there. What other weird kind of shit do we have? I was going to say, they, they unplugged the children's rides in supermarkets. <laughs> as a, because oh. It would be disrespectful to have a ride on a brightly coloured plastic car. <laughs> I thought when you said that, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. I thought you were going to say they unplug children in hospitals. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> because the, because the ventilators were making too much noise and the Queen <laughs> wouldn't have liked it. Because they did that, didn't they? They cancelled some operations in hospitals. They closed food banks. It yeah. sounds like just, just an excuse to close food banks, doesn't it? It's like, well, we can't afford these. It's closed. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of the Queen. It's, it's disrespectful to eat from a food bank. The, don't you know the Queen's just died? <laughs> yeah, go out and eat swan like she would have done. <laughs> I think I put a tweet out and it was a, I, it was a bit more controversial than I wanted it to be. Just, I mean, I hadn't really thought it through, like most stuff on Twitter, I guess. But I did put out that my, you know, when my nan died and she was just like a, a little pensioner living alone. But when she died, she did put aside enough money for everyone to have a bite to eat at her funeral. And I was thinking, yeah, the Queen hasn't really done that, has she? And she's not short of a few, Bob. <laughs> I remember the radio when Princess Diana died just played so cool, I think, all the time. Yeah. I think it did this this time because I, I heard Kiss FM and not that I listened to Kiss FM a lot, but <laughs> I, I was in a gym. I'm not boasting. Um, oh, yes. But... Yeah, and I was just, worried. I was just yes, <laughs> bench pressing 500. <laughs> yeah, where yeah. are you, Paul? Where are you really? I was like, it's very calm in here today because it, usually it's like manic. It's like the music's manic. And I realised playing this very chilled, ambient yeah. music. Yeah, it's been easy listening stuff for the last 10 days. And I'm like, is it because she was a fan herself of kind of contemporary soft rock? <laughs> uh, so the one thing I've enjoyed, I mean, you know, Although the end of the monarchy. No, I have enjoyed the. Um, uh, I've enjoyed the fact there's been no adverts. That was absolutely joyous. 
Oh, no, good. Well, I mean, because you normally forward through the adverts, probably. Because I just I hadn't realised how sort of shouty and in your face adverts were. So regardless of what you're mm. watching, there's some of these little intermittent bits where people go, "Ah, buy fucking stuff." <laughs> and you watch football, so. <laughs> yeah. No, well, they did it in the football. They did it in the football league because yeah, but I, have... I put it on mute when the um, pundits come on anyway. Oh, because your own opinions are so strong. Are yeah, exactly. Feel... I, I know far more than people that have played the game in the past. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the whole. Well, there we go. That's the whole point of fan TV when that fans do the commentary, which is always interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're good up to a certain point, aren't they? In terms mm. of insight. And then there'll be bits of the game where they'll suddenly lose it and go, Whoa, what happened? There? I, don't, <laughs> I don't understand. What's that? <laughs> and you kind of go, actually, you probably do need a professional footballer to explain that moment. <laughs> yeah. They probably lose it. And you, What's offside again? <laughs> you've scored the most brilliant goal ever against them. And they go, Oh, no, I don't yeah. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they don't do they don't do impartial no <laughs> at all. And and the Sundays they rage quit, don't they? If it goes really badly against their team, there was a lot of that early in the season. A lot of Man United fans because Man United started badly, and they were just like halfway through games, just go fuck off, and they're smashing their <laughs> monitor, and, which says it all about a Man United fan. I think that sense of entitlement that you can't deal with the fact that you're not going to win every game. I think other fans would perhaps be more moderate, but it was quite funny. Arsenal fans are the same. Arsenal are TV they? is is very good. <laughs> Arsenal TV is very very funny. If you're a Brighton fan, aren't you midfield type? I am. So you're just happy to be there, aren't you? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's just a, it's a lovely day out. There's some colour. <laughs> Can I just point out we are fourth in the Premier League at the moment? Yeah, no one's believing that. Anyone who's <laughs> anyone who's listening to this episode in three or four weeks' time, you'll realise that Brighton are back down in the relegation zone. <laughs> and this was just fake news <laughs> that we were putting out. But yes, no, there was this strange brief moment where the monarch dies, we get a new prime minister, and Brighton at the top of the table. Yeah, it doesn't look... <laughs> It's the end of times, isn't it? I think this is the rapture. <laughs> Surely all the signs are there. Yeah, we've got a new prime minister. We're well, shit as a yeah. topical news quiz. It was the new prime minister as well, but that kind of got blown out the water by the Queen stealing her thunder, as it were. It's like the first thing Liz Truss did as a prime minister. Was it kill the Queen? Uh, <laughs> there was speculation because she was a Republican in her youth, wasn't she? A was she? she was know. a Lib Dem Republican. And there's video footage of her doing it. Again, I think News Biscuit, it might be me that did it. Let's fess up. I think about a tweet saying, <laughs> suggesting that there was, she was a, a Lib Dem sleeper agent who had poison on her hand when she met the Queen. And <laughs> mission accomplished. Uh, Entirely accidental. When she got home, felt a bit rough, took a lateral flow test and was like, whoops, I just put that. <laughs> I'll just I'll just put that one in the bin. <laughs> I mean, one thing about the whole ceremony, I mean, making a 73-year-old man walk that far for that long, I thought was quite, you know. Yes, mean. without there being a, a co-op at the end of that or, you know, <laughs> que queuing for the post office to pick up his stamps, at no point you should see an elderly man queuing that long. I think he has been practising for the past 20 or 30 years. Mm, it's a bit weird at that age to suddenly step up and have your first job. <laughs> and, well, a president of the United States is probably about the mean age for it. Yes, I guess our, yeah, our, our king looks sprightly in relation to <laughs> uh, any meetings of all these world leaders when they get together, just reeks of Werther's Originals. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the new Werther's Originals adverts? They're very odd. Uh, no, tell, tell us oh, what for. Uh, well, they're, they're, they're I think they're going for a new demographic. So they like cut, there's, there's new Werther's original flavours. Like young people going, will you have one? <laughs> it's, it's very disturbing. <laughs> what? They're ditching the old sort of strange, creepy old man with well, no, no, in his I pocket attracting small children. Still have that. But oh, they good. have, a, they're, try, they're trying to broaden out with new, younger people eating Werther's originals, but different type of flavours. Um, maybe I've only seen it because uh, I've been watching a lot of uh, challenge TV. It seems to be on that. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you are the target audience <laughs> what kind of flavors do young young people young people have then what's a young it's, people uh, flavor I, i'd have to look it up but i think it's like <laughs> a hint of strawberry or something. strawberry and lime Ooh. like their ciders 
him told yes. implies something went wrong in the manufacturing process <laughs> and they got a batch that didn't taste like proper Werther's. They're like, uh, oh, we'll call this hint of strawberry. Uh <laughs> if any Werther's people are listening, if I've got that wrong, I apologize. But it is a different type of flavor for a different type of audience. By Werther's. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what? Have, you been, have you been sued in the past by Werther's original? <laughs> They're very, very litigious, Werther's. <laughs> That, that was a very nervous kind of backtracking. Or, um, or are you just pitching for a, a free tin? If that if the free tin turned up, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, news biscuit. Always on the lookout yeah. for oh, yes. bribes by yes. confectioners. All my um, news stories from now on are going to be have a Werther's <laughs> theme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, where were we? We were doing news brief. Yes, were we? <laughs> that, that, that is terribly brief. Well done, everyone. I, yeah, where do we I've get done one. One. You've done one. <laughs> well, I think you beat. I'd like to say thank you for your efforts and good night. Yeah. Okay. What else have you got? Boris threatens legal action over lying in state allegations. <laughs> Liz Truss already speaking to party donors about getting new wallpaper. <laughs> well, it's going to be your first priority. The, the decor yeah. in number 10 is horrendous. I mean, regardless of what they paid for it, you can't move into that. that it's what you technically yeah. call a fixer-upper. <laughs> Failed ballet student leaves university with just a tutu. <laughs> and Paul started with smut, so I'll end with smut. Man who had sex with pasta claims he was just cannelloni. The terrible. I like that one. I like you that. You do. You both like that one. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. <laughs> We've got the level. That, is that fusion of smart and pasta porn, <laughs> which is such a niche area of comedy for, for good reason. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you, guys. Our next round is True Biscuit. And this is where our panel has to guess which is a real headline and which is a fake one. Couple mistakes abstract painting for an interactive exhibit and paints over the artist's work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, okay. There are people who walk around art galleries armed with pots of paint, yeah. assuming <laughs> there's going to be interactive elements. I've been in many, I haven't been in many a gallery, I'm not that sophisticated, but the few I've been in, they've never had interactive elements where you kind of make your own bit of art or... <laughs> It was a piece of art generated for the Great Graffiti Show, and part of the exhibit was a few paint buckets and brushes right. and lying below the work. This couple thought oh, that was, was an invitation a... to collaborate, oh. Oh, right. even though it had been on display for five years before this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bold decision walking for a gallery and sit. It's like, I don't know. And going, I know what this needs. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, hold my bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the gallery has brought it on themselves. I mean, I'm all for like leaving, oh, you leave brushes around and maybe empty pots of paint to suggest, oh, here's a work in progress kind of. The, but you don't put full pots of paint. That does seem a wee bit daft. And if it's anything yeah. like me, well, I say me, my family, we, <laughs> whenever we do DIY, we regularly kick over pots of paint. I mean, that is a common theme. I once left Mrs. Renfo in that. I don't know where I was going. I, I got away for the day or whatever. And we had a small little bathroom to decorate. And it's a small little area. And she doesn't really do DIY. But we're like, yeah, OK, you can you can manage this level. You're just white, white pot paint, brush, you crack on and do it. And within about 30 minutes of her starting this process, I got a frantic phone call for her that she'd put her foot in the pot of paint and <laughs> had got her foot stuck and she was sort of hobbling around, which is clearly plagiarised from the Chuckle Brothers yeah. um, <laughs> as a routine because there's no way a real human being is doing it. But she had, and the whole place was just, everything was just coated in white paint because she couldn't get this pot of paint off her foot. Well, so <laughs> she's an idiot. Um, <laughs> love her dearly, but she's terrible. There's another one, and I just, I'm just completely digressing, but this is, gives you insights into our family life. There's another one where there was a, a problem with the bath, and again, I was away for business. Um, uh, you, seem away. you seem to be like the, 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 the person's away, like where he, uh, the, he's in jail, but he's away for business. business yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, the bath was uh, <laughs> leaking or something like that. So she phoned one of our, our friends, and he just took a hammer to it. So by the time I come back the next day, the entire sort of bath was in ruins. And she's trying to explain why her and this other man were in there and what had happened. Obviously, I completely bought the story of the DIY thing. 
Um, of course. But, yes, why wouldn't you? Still <laughs> still, still lingers in your mind, though, that you've all yeah, doubt. Just yeah, now. there's a little bit of doubt. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, every um, time I go away on business, something goes wrong with the plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> the plumber's the very good looking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you're in charge of true or falseness of these things. Is it even vaguely? It's true. Because the people do think a lot of things are interactive now. The Mona Lisa, they had that. What? They they spread mayonnaise over it, didn't they? The what? Two people. <laughs> are you are you confusing the, the Mona Lisa with like a sandwich? What? <laughs> <laughs> it was a protest, I think. So for that reason, for that spurious reasoning, I'm going to say it's, it's true. So you say it's true because you put mayonnaise on paintings? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just this is getting weirder. It is true. No, it's not. <laughs> True. <laughs> the, painting, the painting in question has been displayed at several exhibits since the incident, but now includes a small fence preventing audiences from approaching it. See, but again, yes, that's a mistake. Small I... fence, you're going to get shepherds coming in thinking that, that <laughs> they, they're just encouraged to put sheep in the area. Well, we saw the fence. So it's still being displayed, but and with the damage on it, then. Yes, yeah. Originally, the four hundred and forty thousand dollar painting was Ooh, ruined. That's wow. how much it cost. Yeah, twenty one foot by six by eight foot painting. Oh, it's a big one as well. Yeah. So yeah. they really had to go for it. Again, I'd be intimidated by the sheer size of the job in front of me, but that couple was like, "No, come on." We've got this. We're going to go magnolia <laughs> all over it. Because that's what couples do. Couples paint stuff magnolia. <laughs> but I looked at it and gone, oh, that's far too busy. <laughs> it goes back a few years ago where there was in some sort of very old church, there was a picture of, of Christ. And it was, you know, it, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. And this lady who worked in the church thought she should touch it up slightly have you ever That's seen right. it yeah yes, yes. <laughs> it's the most horrendous thing that she could have. yeah it looks dreadful it looks like she's basically painted a chimp i mean anyone who's ever tried to repair something and it's gone badly wrong you'll completely recognize that that feeling of kind of the the heat rising up the back of your neck and you just go oh shit what have i i reckon she probably kept on going thinking i can save this I yes can, yes I can save it. oh yeah. like me and my first marriage you do <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hang on in there. And yeah, all you're left with is a chimp. <laughs> Paul L. This is, uh, I didn't know Midfield Diamond was going to be on. So this is more football related. Uh, oh, football look, at, oh, look at you. He's all happy now. Right, go ahead. Football club, the cafe, loses Michelin star. One of the things is infusion of sun dried Sri Lankan, camellia, Sydney, and tips. I think I've had that in a pie. <laughs> <laughs> You say you eat you, chips with that. Yeah, cheesy chips and curry <laughs> sauce on top. <laughs> Lovely. We said we said they'd lost Michelin Star. I thought initially that either Michelin Star was the name of a player <laughs> or that, that it'd literally been something stolen by their hooligans from another ground or something, another somewhere else. <laughs> And they just taken this back and like nailed it to their cafe. So they lost the Michelin star. I didn't know how to get it in the first place. They're of... doing great quality food, remember? Yeah, well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you? Why would you question that? Yeah, yeah. No, I just. I, I, I presume this is the corporate, the corporate restaurants rather than the. Um... It's a it's a small football club up in Scotland. Oh, well, it won't be a biggie then. I'm sorry for our viewers up in Scotland, but you've got Rangers <laughs> and Celtic and that's about it. Sorry. Yeah. Norwich have got Delia Smith, haven't they? My father, if he was ever to leave my mother, it would be for Delia Smith. That, that that heady combination <laughs> of good food and football. I think that's all he's ever wanted in a woman. It, did, it actually doesn't even need to be a woman. So when it just offers him good food and football, that's it, he's off. I mean, I think, I think they lost it because offering a reconstructed pie which was just a pie <laughs> that had been dropped, <laughs> but, so, that had been hurled so, yeah. as a weapon. Yes. By one set of <laughs> so they, they deconstructed it once and then they'd reconstructed it. Yes, back to a pie, but I think yeah. the, the Michelin guide doesn't really allow that. So that's how they lost the, the Michelin star. See, I struggle to believe the Michelin people who judge these things. Who are the Michelin people? Is it the Michelin man? Is it, do you spot him? Is he like huge kind of inflatable kind of like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters? Does he yeah, sort of see him coming out again? Yeah, yeah. Doom, yeah. Doom, doom. <laughs> <laughs> I love your food. Do, do they go to football grounds? I mean, aren't they busy well, I suppose going they go, they go anywhere where the food's going to be, if they've got the news, the food is wonderful. There's seagulls. <laughs> yeah. It's just anywhere there's chips, they'll go. It's not implausible that a, a football restaurant could lose the Michelin star. It's just mildly implausible that they had it in the first place, I think, is the 
Okay. It, what do you mean okay? So I'm not saying anything unreasonable. So, okay, well, yeah. just, okay, Red. If you're going to be like that, if you're going to be, if you're going to doubt yeah. me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that well, is the okay. nature of this exercise. It's about doubt. I mean, I'm just putting well, that out. Yes, yeah, so I don't know, but you don't, don't have to do it. Don't get the on. You don't, you, you don't have to do it so like hurtfully. <laughs> Was it your restaurant, Paul? Yeah, yes. <laughs> All these true biscuits are so autobiographical with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. It does sound implausible, but. I'm going to go true. Here at Brighton, we do have veggie pies with you know, sweet potato, brie and spinach. And quite... You do? I've, I've had that. I've, yeah. been, I've had that. It is, an, it is, it is nice. It is yeah. nice. Yeah. I, don't I wouldn't believe it's necessarily a Michelin him... star nice. I mean... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is false. It's a <laughs> news biscuit story. <laughs> uh, but it could be a true biscuit, I think, now. OK, right. Midfield Diamond, you've got another one for us. Go on, go on. Papua New Guinea appoints minister for coffee. To make the coffee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they have very long, so they have very long meetings in, the, in their cabinet. <laughs> and in the end, they're like, oh, just can, look, someone make the coffee. Look, if no one's going to make it, I'm going to have to appoint you one of you minister. We've got a minister called coffee. We have. We've, but they've got one for coffee. Right. <laughs> What, what and that makes like? it that makes it more or less plausible <laughs> the fact that there is <laughs> a minister for coffee. Well, I, I I'm, I'm assuming it's one of their big bits exports. of you know exports and things. Six percent of the country's GDP. That's wow. probably quite, that's probably quite a lot. But then no, none of us are economists, <laughs> so we're all going. Oh yeah, six percent sounds low. So there's economists <laughs> going, no, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, six percent. Six percent. But does, does that mean they got ministers for everything they export? Like minister for like handbags and minister <laughs> for like they do I have a minister see, for I can, palm my oil. Brain, sorry, I, my brain just froze up. I couldn't think of another thing that we could export. I went, "There's coffee, there's handbags," <laughs> and my brain went, "No, that's it. They're the only two things that a nation exports: coffee and handbags." <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm an idiot. What a moron. Uh, sorry, yeah, midfield diamond. Go tell yeah, us they more. do. They do have another minister for palm oil, which is one uh, of the bigger exports. Oh, oh, bigger. What percentage? Twenty-seven percent. That's massive. Twenty-seven percent. I, I was impressed by six percent. Agriculture exports, yeah, I, and all the rest is handbags. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they've got a minister for handbags. I don't know where I've got the handbags <laughs> thing from. I. <laughs> And yet, in my brain, there's a bit of my brain goes, yeah, handbags, that's a good answer. If I was on Family Fortunes last night, I'd be laughed out of the building, wouldn't I? Name the top five things the UK exports. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd have gone, handbags? <laughs> <laughs> and what would you do as a minister for coffee? I mean, what would you... I mean, is it like the man from Del Monte? You'd go around just sipping it and go, hmm, I approve of this. The Prime Minister explained what the focus would be for the ministry the focus will be coffee coffee and coffee <laughs> tough on coffee and the causes of coffee i, I thought it should be he, he needs to fight for your right to latte or something like that but <laughs> well i don't think they should mock it i mean it's a serious oh, it's a serious uh, position holy moly <laughs> They're smug with your coffee puns. I'm going to say it's false. It's a news biscuit story. Because it's the kind of rubbish we'd come up with. We'd give, <laughs> we'd give, a, we'd give a minister, a news biscuit, we regularly give ministers made up stupid jobs, like, <laughs> mi like minister for Brexit. <laughs> it's true. Oh. I deliberately didn't announce his name because I thought that would give it away. Because obviously, if I say so his name is Jokerly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the kind of rubbish name that a news biscuit writer would come up with. And, and to be <laughs> fair, the editors would cut that out of the story. We wouldn't have that. We'd like, no, that is just bad no, writing. No. Joe Killy, no, no, we're not having that. Did you think the Prime Minister in question was just like mocking this person because he had a silly name? So he just gave him a silly job as a minister. <laughs> Paul? Firefighters spend three hours removing cows stuck in a tree. Utterly ridiculous. <laughs> well, utterly ridiculous. Yes, that is the title you can imagine across Curve of the Sun or something. That they'd love that. The editor would just take the weekend off after coming up with that. They'd be very happy. Utterly ridiculous was the quote from the firefighters. Oh, that, so they'd spent time thinking up a really good <laughs> pun. In fact, I suspect the scenario was they'd rescued the cow, then didn't tell anyone for several hours while they sat around thinking up what's the best pun. I like the it's fact that the idea of the emergency services might not be rushing to my house because they're too busy trying to think of some sort of clever little witty well, thing it, they can say. You said that it took three hours to remove the cow, so there was plenty of time. Two hours was but... thinking up the punchline. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
at the fire service got a uh, Twitter, so they, the puns were accompanying in the photos. Oh, right. So there's some intern, you're saying, back at the office, some like six, spotty 16-year-old kid <laughs> yeah. who, who just every time the, f- the fire service does some sort of really something heroic, they're going, oh, right, no, I'll make it something jokey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 20 <laughs> people died in an inferno today, but holy in, smoke. Apparently, in, in my, <laughs> the news story, in one picture, the cow looked pretty disappointed with herself. I mean, was she nesting? Is that actually how cows give, give birth? Because I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a live birth of a cow. Maybe they do it up trees. Um, that autumn, could watch. Is, cows autumn, autumn watch. Cows Autumn watch would be brilliant. <laughs> Chris Packham, who I love, he's just sort of looking up the tree, slightly bemused. It's just a cow <laughs> sitting up there. I, I think it's I think it's a wood thrush. <laughs> could, it, could have been nesting, looking for food. Was it up the tree? It can't have been up the tree, surely. Well, yeah, that's the point of the fire brigade coming out to rescue it. They weren't rescuing <laughs> it because it, it was sitting watching a tree. Was it like a cat up a tree? It's a cow. Well, yeah, they do. They they don't. They, <laughs> do they don't, climb trees? The, the fire brigade don't aren't picky about what animals up a tree. <laughs> they haven't got firm rules. If it's not a cat, we're not coming. They like if it's something is up a tree, they're the guys you call. Yeah. Except if it's a bird, then that's a that's a nuisance call. <laughs> See the bird up a tree. But, Is it a uh, mahogany tree? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. I'm going to leave that joke you in. You should leave it in. And then you can, you can then think about what you've done, man, and apologise think... to your friends and family. And the third potential option is it was flung into the tree by a, some sort of... It would have been a very large catapult or a cowapult. In America, they have animals get caught in trees after hurricanes, don't they? Or do they? Is that the excuse the, the cows give? When people come well, around, they go, oh, there was a hurricane. In fact, the cows have been climbing trees for years and they're trying to not let us know. It's like a far side cartoon where the I animals think, are doing shit behind our backs and we don't know it. I think we might have just discovered something. OK, so I mean, they're the only three options I can think of how a cow ends up in a tree. They're, oh, I suppose it's a fourth option where the cow is put up the tree by drunken teenagers. <laughs> um, that is definitely a fourth because cow tipping. That's one that kids like to do. How do you do it when they're asleep? Is that is that? Thing? Yeah. Or there's another kind of cow tipping where you just leave them in laybys, but that's technically like it's like fly tipping, but with cows. Uh, <laughs> you're just dumping cows you don't want there. The cows are like, what? If you feed cows apples, they get drunk and fall over. Is that how you seduce cows then? <laughs> 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 Just revealed a little bit about yourself. A little touch of the, little touch of the Bill Cosby's. Oh, <laughs> Their tongues are very rough, <laughs> but worth it. I bet that. Am, am I yeah. am I revealing too much here? Yes, you are. And then he <laughs> and then he sticks them up in a tree afterwards. So when they wake up all sort of sort of hung over and up in a tree, they just assume nothing's happened. Like, oh, I was drunk, I went up a tree, as opposed to they've they've had a, a night of delights with Midfield Diamond. <laughs> I think it's false. Uh, on on what grounds? Because <laughs> cows don't cows, climb trees. Cows can't fly. <laughs> cows don't climb trees. Well, clearly one of them did. <laughs> I think it's all made up. Right, okay. Paul. Even the pun is not good, is it? <laughs> oh, what? You're oh. taking the high moral ground on puns, <laughs> yeah. are you? I, I think the evidence of this episode will speak for itself, <laughs> your <laughs> lord. If... <laughs> <laughs> It is true. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a cow anecdote. And I don't know if I shared this on the podcast, but if I have, apologies that I repeat the same stuff. But I got up very early one morning to, to go to work. I mean, proper early. It was like sort of four, half, yeah, half four in the morning. And I just walked into the street and running down the street was a bull. <laughs> <laughs> And not in a kind of friendly way. This bull was like proper frothing at the mouth, really, really angry. And I was like, I have no idea what to do in this scenario other than <laughs> try not to get skewered because bulls are massive. And it ran towards me and then it sort of did a sharp kind of turn and it went into the neighbor's garden or drive, I should say. And it hit the neighbor's car and the entire car just completely collapsed. Because <laughs> um, it's, it's, two, three ton of bull just hitting it. Yeah. And then it ploughed off into the neighbour's garden. You can hear it sort of smashing up their greenhouse and all the rest. Yeah, you know, bull in a china short, yeah, literally happening in front of me. And I'm like, whoa, that was really dangerous. And I, then my next thought was, who do I phone in that circumstances? Well, and I phoned the, I phoned the police first because I was a bit worried that someone might get hurt. It's a bull. And they went, it's nothing to do with us. 
<laughs> well, and that was their entire response. I'm like, okay, all right. If it's nothing to do with you, is there at least someone else I should be phoning? And they're like, we don't know. It's a bull. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have the answer, Brent, because this news story, there is someone in the fire service who is the animal rescue tactical advisor. <laughs> yeah, but I, spe- I back to the Phil Diver's earlier point, I suspect that person spent their entire time specialising in cats. That's true. No, sure they're getting not. the phone call. They go, oh, fuck, I don't know. I don't know cows. <laughs> G- give it a saucer of milk. I only know cat stuff. Uh, <laughs> does it like tuna? I was just thinking about the insurance claim for the car. What would you write on the form? Some silly cow ran into me. <laughs> <laughs> but it just occurred to me, if the bull then just wandered off, and then my neighbours a few hours later get up, and they look into their drive, and their car is <laughs> mashed, but there's no evidence as to what did it. I mean, that would just blow your mind. <laughs> You're like, Dave, Dave, come to the window. <laughs> the car's deflated. <laughs> Finally, we reach the magic eight ball. <laughs> The Magic 8 Ball! Each of our guests is going to give us their predictions for next month's news. And Liz Truss is going to frack the country. <laughs> <laughs> Women's England footballers to show men's England footballers where the goal is one more time. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to the end of this episode. And I can reveal this month's winner are florists. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank our guests, Midfield Diamond. Thank you. Goodbye. And Paul L. Thanks. Bye. And I leave you with these headlines. Controversial barber raises some eyebrows. (laughs) Man in hospital after eating memory foam mattress. Doctors say he's comfortable. (laughs) And Westminster Hall trip advisor complains of long queues and no gift shop at the end. (laughs) You've been listening to News Biscuit free to read and free to write for. We accept submissions from any budding satirist, young or old. Visit newsbiscuit.com to submit headlines, stories, and to support new writers. Newsbiscuit, real fake news. We've talked about football a lot. Yeah, I know, today. I know, it was. <laughs> I didn't know, that, that was, um, that was, I didn't know midfield diamond was going to be there, honestly. And I was like, oh, right, I've got a lot of football stuff. <laughs> It just goes to show how small the audience for these podcasts are, because we are no, no, we're no longer pandering towards a wider audience. We're just pandering to people on our panel. So midfield diamonds really happy. Lots of football. Yes. <laughs>